Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. So you want to start off this video with a little bit of an unbagging. So I've been stocking up on parts, anything from switches to volume controls, tone controls, capacitors, uh, everything that will help with repairs, building, or whatnot as far as guitars. So I've already gotten uh, five tusk nut blanks that are already shaped but they're a little bit on the thinner side you know they're not made for a Les Paul style guitar like a, a Gibson or Epiphone uh, or even Ibanez, some of the Ibanez guitars the ones that I ended up picking up are a little bit on the thinner side good for say like um, ESP guitars or some of the uh, Schecter guitars so what I ended up doing is ordering a bunch of more nuts so I've been ordering them in fives, okay? Now these are kind of expensive. Even the other ones that I have that are shaped, these are tusk blanks. So they are rectangle, they are not shaped at all. And these are the one fourth, one and a quarter, or one quarter, or quarter, a quarter, sorry, uh, thickness. And basically the same thing is you end up cutting these down to size, shaping them the way that you want to, and putting your own uh, string slots inside of them. So. I've been ordering them in fives, so that's one set. And I think this is some more of them. Not sure. All right, here we go. Yep, these are more. So, no stickers or anything. So here are some black tusks, and these are also the same as these, just in black. And these are the graphite ones. So these are good for like Ibanez guitars and stuff like that that uh, have a black nut on them instead of having the cream color or a white nut all right so like I said I've been stocking up on parts why well it's kind of good to have extra parts in case they are needed so this is my parts box for guitars now I do have another box that's underneath the counter and it's basically just parts for bridges and uh, Floyd Roses, uh, base bridges, and saddles, and everything else. So inside this case here, it's basically just a tackle box for fishing. It can be used for anything else. I got everything from extra knobs, brand new, to extra strap locks, some testing wire. Uh, I have a lot of bone nuts here that are blanks as well. Um, now these are not lubricated. These have been bleached. And there's some plastic ones in here. I kind of hold on to some of these, uh, the old used ones. I don't have very many of the Strat style ones. I don't usually work too much with Strats, but I've been lately. Micro switches, three-way, two-way, five-way, regular switch, uh, vi or tone pots. Um, got some inlays, dot inlays over here. Got some extra uh, three-way switch handles, little tops, screws, springs, washers, nuts, everything inside of here that goes for guitars. And then when I flip this thing open, more parts. Floyd Rose Springs, I've got more strap locks over here, got a whole, whole shit load of them right there. Uh, bags of string ferros, you know, larger lock washers for control pots or whatnot. I'll put jacks, some smaller stuff inside of here, I just lost a screw, that is basically for, uh, these little washers right here are for tuning pegs. Uh, I got a stop over here for a trim, and like I said, I dropped something in here, here it is. String trees, which that's what popped out. Three-way switches, some box switches, um, some more Tops for switches, got some output jack plates, got some treble and rhythm switch, uh, what do you call those things, uh, poker chips, different screws, black or chrome and uh, silver or chrome and gold, and here are the other thinner tusk nuts, nuts that I picked up. Also, I've got bridges in here, extra strings, uh, loose packs, you know, in case you break a string, you end up with a lot of, a lot of loose packs, you know. 
Got bridges inside here, a couple of roller bridges here, uh, extra bass guitar tuners. These are Stumax, these are Godos. Uh, I don't even know why I keep this, but always save this screw for the detuna uh, just in case you want to take it off of your guitar and put back, back to stock. At least you still have the stock screw for it. Switches, volume controls, pots, all kinds of guitar pick. I mean, I, I'm stocked here. I've got everything I need here to fix, repair, and swap out in case I want to do so. Now I have a problem with trying to incorporate these guys and all of these into this box. I might be able to do it. I don't know. Maybe. This is probably not going to close on me, is it? This is probably not going to close. Get in there, you. I need a bigger tackle box. So last but not least, I have this package to open up. This is something that I already have, but I have a different version of this, and I like this version better compared to the version that I already have. So let me see if I can find out where it's at. All right, so what we have here is an action height gauge. This is a metal action height gauge. The one that I have and I've been using um, is this, if I can pick it up, plastic card, okay? pretty flimsy eventually this will wear out you know it, it's just plastic so I ended up getting a metal one now this has a plastic layer on top of it, it kind of gets in the way of seeing this these metal ones are supposed to be a lot more accurate and like I said they don't wear so I kind of like this a little bit better than this now if I take this one here and match it up with this one here as far as what it says, like if I go to, um, let's see, if I look at like the 125, 1.25, and if you look at them, all right, this one here has a black line. That black line is what you're supposed to put the string up to. This one here, uh, it's a little bit looks like it's a little bit shorter because there's no black line at the top So basically you want to put that right at the top of the lines So yeah, this one here I can keep as a spare for now But like I said, you know, it's plastic and eventually this would wear and You know, I'll be without one. This one's metal. I think it's a little bit more accurate And that's probably what I'll be using along with the digital ones I have from now on so Let's get back to Weedy's guitar because uh, I'm itching to get that thing done. Alright, so right here we have Weedy Guitar Studios Black Strat. This is his giveaway guitar. The one thing I don't know why they did was, which when I put the neck on here, I have to check this out. For some reason, the pocket over here where the neck goes into is flat, but then it dips down this way. So I don't know if they tried to... Um, make this a pivoting neck or what but that could explain why it ended up cracking a little bit over here in the finish which that will be fixed so first off what I want to do with this thing is is it's just got a lot of holes in the body all right and this is black black is very unforgiving as far as scratches chips dings whatever and I don't want to cause any more cracking that's already on this guitar so there's something that I need to do first as far as all these holes go before I decide to wet stand now some people will use like a little bit of a silicone uh, to kind of pack inside of all these holes uh, I don't like doing that because the uh, silicone can actually mess with the threads uh, on the screws if you try to apply and it's kind of hard to get the silicone out of the hole and as you're sanding between the silicone and the uh, the body of the guitar when you're sanding with it with a sanding block or whatever and you hit the top of that silicone you're kind of pushing that silicone a little bit off to the side and it can still cause water to get inside there so one of the things that I do or I like to do and I'm going to do it now grab a q-tip Minowax rub on poly all right now I've used this I've used this a lot and I'm going to continue to use it as much as possible because 
I like this stuff and it works pretty damn good for different applications. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I'm going to need a screwdriver to do so. Alright, so I've already shaken it up and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this Q-tip, put it inside the hole, dip it into the rub-on poly, and what I'm going to do is coat the inside of these holes with the poly. And what that's going to do is that's going to seal the wood and also seal around the finish as well. I know some of you guys are probably going to be like, well, that's just a waste of rub on poly or, you know, just an extra step that you don't have to take. I kind of do, and I kind of want to take it because of the fact of I've seen what water does to guitars as far as getting inside of holes and watching the wood swell and crack at the same time. I don't like it, and it's not an easy fix either. Applying this to each one of the holes seals the wood and the finish around each other. And creates a barricade so water doesn't get inside these holes and build up, build up to the point where it's going to uh, swell and crack on you. And using a Q-tip, since there's, you know, Q-tip is like a sponge as well. So what that's going to do is that's going to end up uh, adding like a paintbrush, you know, putting too much paint on a paintbrush. The Q-tip is going to absorb a lot of the rub-on poly, and it'll be easier for that to soak into there instead of wood. Now, I don't have to do this very many times at all. I can just do this one time and, and be done with it because the amount that I've stuck inside here is quite a bit. And just letting it dry, the rub-on poly takes, you know, about eight minutes to become tacky. And about a half an hour to kind of be dry to the touch, considering I'm not using a lot of it. So I'm also going to do this area here. And also around this area here, including strap locks. So when I start sanding this thing with the water, and I don't use a lot of water, and I do use alcohol, and I put soap in it as well as a lubricant, um, just so it, it evaporates faster with the alcohol. It doesn't soak into all the nooks and crannies as far as, like, screw holes and shit like that but this helps and this helps out a lot and I found that anytime I'll do a wet sanding on something filling up the holes it's kind of a good thing so you can see it's getting down in there by the color of the wood the wood would actually sorry, actually starts getting darker and right over here as well all right so that's that now there was a really bad chip over here and what I did with it is I ended up scuffing it up with some uh, 400 grit sandpaper first and I used the black stain marker and filled the wood up, well colored the wood back black, stained it and used a little bit of crazy glue on there. So there's two layers of crazy glue on here and I have to level sand that again. So all of these nooks and crannies are basically um, sealed up for right now and what I need to do is just let this dry and then what I want is to remove this adhesive off of here because that is going to cause some sticky buildup on the sandpaper and I don't want that if I try to just sand over this. So I'm going to end up going through a few few pieces of sandpaper to get this thing where I want it. Now the nice thing about doing a uh, wet sanding on something is that close this up and put it away before I, I knock this over and spill it all over the place. 
the nice thing about uh, uh, wet sanding is any type of low spots, high spots, you're going to see it. There will be some shininess to it. Uh, uh, after you end up sanding it, you'll see where there's a dent or something like that. And I can fix that after wet sanding it and then wet sand it again to blend it in and should be fine from there. So it's a good body. Um, I'm not going to say it's a bad body at all. It's actually pretty good. It's routed out halfway decently. I just don't know why they end up jumped the uh, I don't know the router started cutting off this ear over here and didn't finish the job but it's not a bad body it's actually pretty good so a little bit of work on it and uh, she'll be good again all right so how do you remove adhesive well if I had some goo gone I could use that on the finish and it would rub off and come off pretty easily uh, some window cleaners will actually clean off some of the adhesive from some leftover stickers. Um, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some rubbing compound. All right, if I had goo gone or if I had the window cleaner uh, down here, uh, it would be fine to remove this stuff if I was going to be painting. So I'm not going to be repainting this. I'm going to be just kind of working with the finish that I already have. So rubbing compound should work out pretty damn good as far as getting rid of all these the leftovers from the decals. So I'm going to use is the number one. And this is going to be a little bit of an elbow grease, you know, to get rid of it. And you can feel that it's removing it, so. So I've gotten most of it off, not all of it quite yet. All right, so that's one gone. I'm kind of looking back and forth with the LED lights that are on the top of uh, over the counter. I can see that there is a little bit of a wave in the finish. So the stickers kind of did do a number with the finish a little bit. All right, so now I take care of these two here. Same thing, a little bit of rubbing compound. And you can do this automotive, we'll use this like automotive too. Um, if you have a sticker on your paint of your car, use a little bit of rubbing compound to remove it. Um, you can actually use on your vehicle a little bit of WD-40 and that'll help remove uh, decal glue and whatever adhesives that are left behind from the decal that you had on your vehicle. And it won't hurt the paint. All right, so what's left behind is basically a little bit of a scratch here, a ding. And if I get into fluorescent lighting, this one didn't leave this one didn't leave too much of a mark. And this one didn't leave that much of a mark either. So that's a good thing. The adhesive didn't swell up the finish a lot, so that's good. All right, so do I have any on the back I need to take care of? No, I don't. Good. All right, on to starting to wet sand this thing. All right. All right, so I have my water and alcohol mix. Ha, ah, smells really good, doesn't it? And inside of this pink cup is a little bit of dish soap. And so what I want to do is I want to add a couple of drops of the dish soap to the water alcohol mix 
not a whole lot I don't want it foaming up on me but just enough to make this to where it's going to lubricate water a little bit mix it up a little and then I'm going to take 400 grit sandpaper a couple of sheets of it I already split them I'm gonna let them soak in there for a little bit and I want to get them nice and saturated uh, absorb the water uh, I don't want them sticking together in the water that's won't help them absorb the way I want it to there you go and I'm going to use my little block here that I it's just a piece of fucking what do you call this uh, plastic basically but it's nice and flat doesn't rock doesn't roll doesn't move around it's perfect for using as a block for sanding all right so sandpaper's been soaking I mentioned to get going on this thing and you know how you know how much water a piece of sandpaper has absorbed by how tight it curls so if it curls really really tight it's pretty well saturated if it curls kind of the way it is right now um, it's absorbed but not as much as it could have and I'm itching to start this so I've got my 400 grit and I'm ready to start this thing so I'm gonna level sand this thing get rid of all the scratches without going through the finish there is a clear on this thing and I don't want to get rid of it I just want to level sand this first and not sit in one spot way too long either so enjoy the music, I'm going to keep on sanding. Alright, so before I go any further with this, right now this top part over here has been sanded with 400 grit sandpaper. And as you can see, there are some low spots here and a low spot here, probably from where the sticker was. Um, you know from the swelling a little bit so this part over here got sanded pretty good uh, I don't want to put any do any more wet sanding with the 400 grit on this top uh, because I still have like two more sandpapers three more sandpapers that I have to go through with this as well now I've already found another spot here and when I filled this spot here I also filled this spot here with the uh, marker you know the stain marker so now what I want to do is I want to fill that with the crazy glue and this one here it has to be sanded still um, I'm also finding some other spots on here too as well where it just might need a little bit of a fill over here it's not really a chip but it looks like something round kind of dented it a little bit right here there's a little bit of a indentation that I want to fill as well so what I want to do is this one I can kind of see wood through. So what I want to do is I want to take this marker and go into the spots and is there any more on the top of this thing? There's a spot right here. That would probably sand out that little scratch there. Anything where there's a little bit of wood showing, I'm going to fill that up. Yeah, I don't see any more. So, next thing I want to do is hit some of these spots with some of the crazy glue. Now the hard part of doing this is I need to stand this body up after I do this so it could dry. So I'm using Hyperbond Crazy Glue and I'm not using the accelerant uh, to force dry this because the accelerant can make it bubble and I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is this one that's right here. 
just want to fill it a little bit at a time. Make sure you get under the whole thing. This one as well. And then let that dry. So what I'm going to do is prop this up, up against the counter over here. And once that dries, I will continue with the wet sanding.